Hello, everyone. In this session, we will continue to study the biliary tract diseases. First, let's have a look at the infection of biliary tract. Biliary tract infections mainly include the cholecystitis and the cholangitis at different positions and can also be divided into acute, subacute, and chronic inflammations. Biliary tract infections are mainly caused by biliary obstructions and cholestatus. Biliary calculi are the main cause of obstruction, and the recurring infection can promote non-laser genesis and further aggregate the biliary obstruction. We can see that there are causal relationships between biliary calculi and the biliary tract infections. Now, let's first talk about the acute cholecystitis. Based with the relations with cholex, acute cholecystitis can be divided into acute calculus cholecystitis and acute lung calculus cholecystitis. Acute calculus cholecystitis is more likely to occur in patients about 14 years old and is more common in women than in men and the ratio of the men to women is 1 to 3. In clinical cases, most acute cholecystitis is caused by cholecystolysis. The main causes include obstruction of cystic duct and bacterial infection. The phytogenic bacteria are made in gram-negative by calling, whereas cystogenic calling is the most common one, and others include the Klebacil, Intercococcus fictor, Phytomonas actonis or ectomy. They often combine with anaerobic infections. When physiologic changes starts, cystic ducts would be obstructed. The mosque would be subject to congestion and edema. The ego state in global would increase, and the globe blender would enlarge. If measures are taken to restrict the obstruction at this stage, the inflammation would disappear, and this condition is referred to as acute simple cholecystitis. If the conditions are further aggravated, the physiologic changes would affect the inner layer of global war, causing the war to become thicker. Hemorrhagic titers would occur. The inflammation would spread to the surface, accompanied by fibrous or pure net excretion, and eventually developing in separative cholecystitis. If obstruction of cystic ducts is not relieved, the intraglobal pressure would raise continuously. Blood vessels and gallbladder would be compressed, resulting in hemodynamic disorder and then avascular necrosis and eventually developing in gangrenous cholecystitis. Gangrenous cholecystitis is often complicated with perforation of gallbladder, usually at the bottom and the neck of gallbladder. The inflammation of acute cholecystitis may influence adjacent organs and even spread all the way through to the audium, colon, etc. to form internal global and gastrointestinal fistinals. In respect of canonical manifestations, patients have a history of impaired gastric pains and often be attacked because eating only foods. It is present as engine in the right upper quadrant and below the rear fold, spreading the pain to the right shoulder and the back. It is complained by symptoms of digestive tract, such as noises, immersion, fever, and transit. In physical examinations, Tenderous in the right upper quadrant and the rebound tenderness and the muscular tension of different degrees will be discovered. It would be positive to morphic sign the enlarged gallbladder can be reached. The lab test would indicate the increase of white blood cell and left shift. Through 
the B ultrasonographer, we can see globe signal is enlarged. The ore of the globe is synced, which is greater than 4 mm. The double quarter size of apparent edema is often indicated. And gunstones give out strong air cool, followed by sound shadows. The accurate rate of the B ultrasonograph is diagnosed arctogenesis is 85% to 95%. Next, we will talk about the diagnosis and the differential diagnosis of these diseases. When combine a typical clinical manifestation with lab tests and the imagiologic examination, these diseases can be easily, however, a differential diagnosis should be carried out with us, such as diseases as peptic unclear performation, acute pancreatitis, high appendicitis, hypertypostamine, carcinoma of globular, carcinoma of colon and hepatic fracture, a divectimal performation of small intestine, phenomena, pneumonia, hypothesis, etc. In respect of treatment, acute calcareous cholecystitis needs to be operated eventually, and in principle, a selective operation should be arranged as long as possible. First, non-preoperative treatment can be a treatment approach as well as a preoperative preparation. The methods include abrasor infusion, ventinal supplementation, correction of fluid, electrolyte and acid basin, metabolism disturbance, antibiotics infective to green negative bacilli and another bag bacteria may be used for information provision and antispasmodic pain killing, anti-inflammatory and chloritic medicine can be used in the meantime. After non-operative treatment, the development of most patients' conditions can be controlled, and a selective operation may be scheduled later. In the course of treatment, close attention should be paid to the variation of conditions, and in the case of aggravated conditions, a surgical treatment should be determined in time. At the acute stage, the operation should be as safe, simple, and effective as possible. For patients of emergency operations, the injections include first, patients being attacked within 48 hours to 72 hours, second, patients whose non operative treatment is ineffective and whose conditions are deteriorated. Third, patients subject to complications such as perforation of the gallbladder, general peritonitis, acute purulent cholangitis, acute necrotizing pancreatitis, etc. The specific operation method include first, cholecystomy, the lipocropic Cholecystomy is a preferred method, or the conventional mealy cholecystomy may be applied. Second, partial cholecystomy, if it's difficult to separate the gallbladder bed or the hemorrhage occurs, part of gallbladder or on the bed may be kept. Third, for patients in critical conditions or during the operation, there is local serious adhesion or unclear automatic relationship. The neostomy may be carried out first to pressure relief and joining, and the cholecystomy may be conducted three months later. Fourth, pectinous transplantic gallbladder drainage guarded by 
ultrasound. This procedure can be used to reduce the pressure in the gallbladder, and a selective operation may be scheduled after the acute eight stage. It is suitable for superative cholecystitis patients who are in critical conditions and not appropriate for operation. Acute lung calculus cholecystitis. Next, let's study the acute lung calculus cholecystitis. The incidence of acute lung calculus cholecystitis accounts for 5% of acute cholecystitis. It may occur at any age and is more common in men than in women. At present, the etiology is still unknown, and when patients in critical conditions with a serious trauma or having been using parental neutral for a long time suffering a pain in the right upper current accompanied by fever, we should be alert about these diseases. During a physical examination, if a patient shows an impasketric, tenderous, and signs of parental irritations, it's positive to morphine, or the enlarged gallbladder can be reached. Further examination should be carried out in a timely manner. This disease is hard for diagnosis through the ultrasonograph at the early stage, but CT can do some help. And about 1978 patients can be definitely diagnosed after the radio eosotope scanning of the hepatobiliary system. It is easy to cause the necrosis and the perforation of gallbladder, and therefore should be treated through operation soon after the diagnosis. It may be treated through the cholecystitomy. The cholecystitomy or the percutaneous tracheopathic gallbladder drainage. Patients without a definite diagnosis or with mild conditions should be provided with active non-operative treatment under close observations. And once the conditions are deteriorated, an operation should be carried out in time.